I would like to speak to that part of you that never dies. That part of us all is present now and always, but we're here now, so that's the important part. What happens when we become conscious of that, when we respond to life that way, when we come from that part of ourselves that never dies, will, will never die, has never died? We can have a conversation together from that perspective, from the perspective of the part of us that never dies. Part of what we have to consider is the part of us that does. The part of us that does. And what are we going to do with that? There's a conversation around how to take care of that part of us that has a life cycle. The conversation I'm looking to have is as that part of us who never dies, what do we do with that human capacity that gets up to whatever it gets up to? That's a conversation that can go someplace. It goes to a different place, by the way, than the conversation that originates and stays bound by that human part of us that is temporary. A conversation that begins and ends with that tends to go down the tubes. There's no answer to that conversation. There's no resolution to it. There's no solution to the human experience when the conversation begins and ends there. When the conversation begins and ends with that part of us that never dies, then that part of us brings the wisdom of the cosmos to the human experience. It brings the power of love to the human experience. And then there's an answer. As some of us were considering it the other morning, our human experience has a God encounter. A God encounter. An encounter with your creator. An encounter with the angel. And how does that happen? Because we bump into an angel someplace? No, it's because we come to know that as ourselves. Just like me and just like everybody, there are a lot of dimensions to who we are, right? Mother, father, sister, brother, clerk, accountant, swimmer, skier, American, Canadian, whatever. Many dimensions to who we are. But all the dimensions of who we are have the opportunity to have a God encounter, a cosmic encounter, if you will, an encounter with the Creator. Maybe at first it seems like that is something outside ourselves. But the fulfillment of the God encounter happens because the aspect of the Creator that we are looks at the human experience from that perspective. And then there's a right beginning for what happens in the human experience. And there can be a right conclusion, a right fulfillment. If you begin with love, there can be the fulfillment of love in your life as a human being. There can be the expression of it, the radiation of it, the knowing of it with other people, the vibration of it, the bringing of that into the world. But if you don't begin with the God encounter, with a love encounter, a cosmic encounter, you're not going to end with it. It's not going to go to some place wonderful and loving if it doesn't start from there. That's the key to the whole thing. When we get the big idea about what's going on here, and when there's some number of us they're having a conversation 
from the perspective of that part of us that doesn't die. It's a crude way to put it, but I just wanted to get as blatant as I could. When we're beginning to have that conversation, then there is something we are doing collectively. We are bringing something fantastic to the world. We've been about that here at Sunrise Ranch and for emissaries of divine light. Well, depending on how you count it, since 1945 here, since 1932, when we were born into the world as a network of people. There are the people online. There's us here. There's people in Canada. We're a, a mighty nation. Behind it all, this all relies on a few people who are conscious that who they are at the very heart and core, at the soul of themselves, is someone who does not die. Not as some, um, what, fairy tale of something. I'm not talking about a fairy tale of something. I'm talking about ceasing to identify with the human drama and knowing that the reality of oneself participates in what we speak of as the creator or God. God to me is a very general word, if you will, a way of naming divine presence, divine being. And the highest parts of each of us participate in that. And so I'll go back to how I began here. I'd like to have a conversation among us from the perspective of that part of us that never dies. Because it is that part of us that has at least potentially authority in our experience if we let it. If we show up as that, we have authority in our own human experience. The authority of of love, of, of a loving being, the authority of truth. We have authority in our human experience. And our human experience be can begin to line up with the expression and embodiment of who we are. That's why this flesh is here, by the way. It is to reveal and embody the creator that we are, the love that we are. And as we do that, we are part of a larger scene, a larger scene in the world today. Do you think there has to be creative authority in the world in which we live? Absolutely. We're here to blow the horn, to shine the light, the lantern for the world, to speak to the truth of who we are and why we're here and what's possible to us as humankind. 